Welcome to the 12 Days of Zentangle and Project Pack number 22. This is day one. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And we are spiraling into or out <laughs> of or onto riding spirals here. Well, spiraling is usually a sort of a negative thing, but in this case, it's exuberance and wonderfulness. And we're just like bouncing off of all of the inspirations that we see of spirals in nature. And in this tile, I'm going to use everything. <laughs> everything in our in this lovely it, pack <laughs> and we're going to use this tile which you will find and you will find it absolutely wonderful and to appreciate it i love to just appreciate the texture and really zone in and focus in on on the materials and the tools and if you haven't uh, listened to our introductory video Please do, because it tells the whole backstory of, of what we're doing here. Yeah, you need to, you need to see, hear yeah, that first. Yeah. yeah, and you get to hear all of us having a good time. And at this point, I am using the 08 black, and I'm restating some of these uh, spiral lines. So with the 08 black, and this is a really interesting exercise to, to follow something, whether you're auraing it or restating it. It's, it's a whole different experience, right, to, than, than doing the line initially. So he's kind of going around the um, flux shapes, mm -hmm. Rick's flux shapes, and making a zigzag, a curvy zigzag line. Right, so we've got this like, yeah, this sine wave going undulating back and forth. And if you make a little like, oh, that could have been more even or something, just wait till the whole thing is done and you realize all those little whatevers just disappear into the whole structure. So Rick has gone to his brown 05 pen and he's doing the same thing. He's kind of going back and forth with a, a zigzaggy motion. And you can see it's that other side of the those flux paisley-like uh, shapes, which are actually part of a spiral in and of themselves, because you could imagine that if you were to put two of them together side by side, you'd have that, you know, traditional uh, yin yang uh, right. symbol, <clears throat> and which is like a spiraling of itself. So I don't, I'm not catching on to that. I'll, I'll show you later. Okay. <laughs> All right. So in the in the inside of the uh, those flux shapes, I'm putting an orb. Again, in the brown ink. And so we're building off this really neat background spiraling uh, string to pull out some of the, uh, or to emphasize some of the structure that's within it. And now I'm using this, what, light teal light, color? Light, yeah, teal turquoise, it's beautiful. And I just tried, just, you know, make sure it's flowing nice on the back. And I'm creating this little window here to make like a little highlight. So I, first I, and I think I learned this from Maria, make a, a little bit of a window mm -hmm. and then fill in around it. And I'm doing that both on the orbs and on the flux of the brown. or I'm alternating. So you just watch and, and play along. And remember, you can at any point, I mean, uh, you figured this out, but you can pause these because we jump ahead a lot. And we also are putting down a lot of ink in this uh, series. So 
we thought, oh, we're going to do like this this short series. And we kept doing more and more and more. So uh, this is our gift to you. And we just made all of this. So the point of that is give yourself time to, uh, at your leisure, do this. And don't feel any pressure to keep up. I like the idea of watching, like watching what Rick does all the way down the line and then stopping the video and then you can see it in front of you and then kind of emulating. So you see, I skipped every other one. So there's a nice little contrast with these colors that this really like this palette that Molly put together. Pretty, huh? It's kind of Southwestern. Yeah, yeah. So... Once we've got those down, I'm going to go back with my brown. And again, I'm going to define some of the spaces by going over the string with the brown 05. And then I'm going to take the inspiration of those flux shapes and fill it with flux. And this is a really uh, fun time for you to use the structure of these leaf-like shapes to put them in different places. So you understand like the, the basic shape that you're doing and that's fairly straightforward and structured, but then you get to put them wherever you feel like at the moment. So the, the beauty of flux is that you, you put down your, your shapes first, those teardrop shapes or leaf shapes, like Rick said, and then it doesn't matter what the background looks like. It can fill very comfortably with these orbs that... that kind of nestle in there um it's such a beautiful tangle and we don't do it that often mm -hmm. and uh this is a nice exercise to get to be reacquainted with flux so whatever size orb you want to uh, put in there whatever fits you put the biggest ones in first and then i'm just going around and coloring in what we call the interstices there and don't get too dizzy there i keep turning I this around <laughs> it's it's what you usually do because you're looking at it and analyzing yeah. the structure because we sort of design on the fly here when we're teaching you and that whole idea of turning your tile it gives you a different perspective as you turn it if it you know, if it was locked in an easel and it never turned, you'd only see it from one perspective. And you'll get different ideas and inspirations. So you may see, be noticing a quote-unquote pattern here because I'm keying the brown sections off of the, the brown background or the, the brown outline that I did on that those first uh, like sine waves, and you can use Hollabaugh technique with these leaves, or you can just set them side by side. So that's another like creative little touch you can decide to uh, employ, and they can overlap, or you might decide you know I'm just going to have them side by side like little puzzle pieces. So we're presenting both options. When I uh, see this shape in like uh, manuscripts, in old manuscripts, they were ahead of the game because this shape can fill anything comfortably and, and elegantly. Uh, I, I go to like polk leaf often because it's just so easy to uh, lose yourself in the drawing. And you get to put these in as big as you want them, as small as you want them, and uh, it, it, it is a very natural and organic uh, tangle. And you can see that these are 
happening within the structure of these spiraling shapes. And that is something that, you know, we're, we're playing with this whole concept of spiral because it's so part of, it, it's energized, like springs are like a, a built-in spiral and, and they have their in, inherent energy within them or you'll see whether it's looking at, you know, images in the sky of giant spirals or little spirals, like if you look at Bijou's shell of a little snail shell, it, mm -hmm. it, it has a similar shaped spiral. And then I'm putting in these, like, what would you call like the center spine of the leaf mm -hmm. and I'm starting like I'm moving and I have like a lighterness to the tip of it so it comes in and then it goes a little bit more heavy so particularly with these uh, 05s and 08s you can really adjust the pressure you're referring to the pens the pens right yeah. right right thanks So here, just going in and finding the, the largest orb that I can, putting it in those spaces. And if you had other pens, you might decide, oh, I'm going to use, you know, like a, an O1 and make even tinier little orbs. But we very, uh, or I very reluctantly held myself to the tools in the... Uh, in the, in the project pack. pack. Yeah. Sometimes the uh, elegance of limits uh, forces you to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do and try something new. Um, so uh, take that to heart. Yeah. And like all of our project packs, you can use any materials. You can use the principles that we're working with here and do you know, find whatever materials, whatever papers, whatever marking devices you have, and look at that almost as like a creative challenge. Like, okay, I don't have these, but I have, I don't have the ones in the project pack, but I have these materials, and how can I use them? And really take that as inspiration instead of limitation. Yeah, so if you have just a, a blank tile and just throw these, this tangle on there and see where it takes you it's a it's a great exercise yeah. in uh, uh almost like one of molly's medicine the silent meditations mm -hmm. you know okay and is it is it a leaf is it a is it one of those balloons like a balloon filled with water and you're holding it at the end or you know it could well, i like it, the paisley analysis yeah an, an, analogy yeah And just really enjoying the process. You know, we, we say that over and over again. The, you know, you can really enjoy the end result and you can really enjoy getting there. So take your time. Uh, this is not a race. This is not a rush. Uh, just really give yourself that opportunity to appreciate the joy of putting this ink on this paper like that. So see, you can see what's happening here is he's uh, skipping uh, a stripe. Right. So within, within the pattern, there's going to be a pattern. And really trying to, or part of my intention, like I, I had an intention when I came in to doing this, and that was to create some contrast by alternating the tools or the colors of the tools in the project pack. So playing off of that spiral string and then, okay, understanding the benefit of uh, contrast and how that pleases the eye. So you can see now what's missing. He's going to add this this piece to complete the, uh, the, the thought process, right? right? And you'll see how I'm holding the tile. As as you put down a lot of ink in like a solid area, uh, it's easy to, it doesn't dry as fast and as it, it can get on your finger, then it gets someplace you might not have wanted it. 
So there we have our brown put in in alternating sections. And then as the contrast, we'll go with the 08 black. And then we're going to do something in those intervening spaces that very conveniently you'll see come off of the black side of that undulation. So you, you'll want to just watch here for a minute to see where he's going. And this is, uh, Maria and I were talking about this before we started, and it's like, is it Shattuck? Is it Crescent Moon? Is it both, you know? And it's... Well, it's almost a backwards Crescent Moon. Right. It's yeah. like a reverse uh, aura coming down. And a lot of times Shattuck will be just those lines all the way down. But in this case, I wanted a little bit of, you know... Uh, drama. <laughs> yes, drama. That's the word I was looking for. So we'll make that last little bit solid ink. So you can see that it it's uh, it's sort of uh, crescent moon, yeah, or crescent moonish. And the technique I have is I take off with that arc at the beginning, right up to the edge, and then I land on the other side, almost at ninety degrees. And that's sort of the the little mechanism that I have in my mind when I'm doing this. And if you look up Shattuck on the app, you'll see that these lines can be straight. Uh, they can be obviously curvy like this. The first time I saw this tangle, so this was a tangle that existed, and we saw it on a Japanese kimono. Mm. It was so beautiful. And, and I then afterwards would see the pattern often in Japanese art. Right. Um, so uh, some, some tangles are are created and some are respectfully uh, re reproduced. Or we take that inspiration. And it's funny, too, because you'll, you'll see something and you'll, you'll do it, and then it seems like all, all, of, all of a sudden you see it everywhere. Like if you buy a car that's, or, you know, if you're right. driving a car that's whatever color, all of a sudden you see all these other cars the same color. So I'm just going to do that in all of those remaining sections. Um, we called it Shattuck uh, uh, to uh, shout, do a shout out to Molly. That's mm -hmm. her middle name. Uh, it was her great grandmother's name. And just like Flux, you can you can work this into tiny tiny areas. And even though it's not absolutely perfect, or whatever that means, into the small spaces, the eye will just figure out, well, that's the way it's going, and it, and it fills in all the missing details. So in the same way that we did the brown on both sides, we're going to do the, uh, the shattuck and here there's just one little one, so it's, it really is like reverse crescent moon. When, when you see Rick go back and forth, he's thinking. I can, I can yeah. hear his <laughs> brain going, uh, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really thinking about what's the best and most comfortable way to, to hold my pen. So it's like arcing the way the natural rotation of... of you know, your wrist would go where it pivots on the heel of your hand. That's an important thing, the, the arc of your hand um, and, and taking advantage of that to make a, a nice smooth line. And I'm going back over those little paisleys or flux shapes with the brown pen over the, what is that color? Uh, it's like a pale peachy color, right? Right. So over that, and then <laughs> over the, <laughs> and then over the teal, I'm using the black. And sometimes I would put a little dot at the end of those inner lines, but isn't that coming good? It looks great. Looks great. It's fun. And now we get it's frosting time. Yeah, shading. And shading Shattuck. Is, Say that ten times fast. <laughs> right? 
is one of the most fun uh, and and easily followed uh, techniques. So the first part of of shading is I lay down a good amount of graphite where I want it to be. It's sort of like, you know, it really is like frosting a cake. You know, you, you just put a big dollop on there and then you come back in and smooth it out with the tortillon. Pushed around. Pushed it around. I like to start with quite a bit too. Um, I'm, I'm not one to shade lightly. I don't or tread to lightly. do anything lightly. <laughs> I don't do anything lightly. <laughs> and you may want to, I know Molly will go back and forth with the tortillon, and there's something to be said for that because you can see the direction that it's going. And in this case, I put all of the graphite down, and then I'm coming back with the tortillon. So what he's doing with the tortillon, for those of you who are new to this, he's pulling it away from the edge and going towards the middle of the tangle. Um, and you want it, you don't want to go all the way. You want to leave white space in the middle for the highlight. This is the big part. If, if you shade everything, then nothing is shaded. Right. But look, look at the, I mean, you get that sense of roundedness and over and under and this is so much fun to do. So, I mean, it's fun to watch. A lot of times, Marie and I are like looking at this, doing the voiceover, yeah, we, and we forget, we to, forget to talk. It's like, oh, this is really cool. <laughs> right? So look at the difference of that. And it's yeah. actually sort of cool with the contrast, you know, of shaded and not shaded. You know, there's something to be said about just stopping there, but right. you get to decide. So with the brown uh, chalk pencil, um, Rick is using it almost like, like a graphite pencil to add shading to these peachy colored uh, shapes. Just for, the, you know, just for something different. And then a little bit opposite the... Uh, the low light. Yeah, the, right. uh, that little window I left there. Brown. And, and B is for brown. I mean... <laughs> And He's a little more organized than I <laughs> Actually, am, somebody yeah. else had done that, so I just used it. But the idea is that, you know, eventually all tortillons become black tortillons. <laughs> but if you uh, keep them separate a little bit, then y you get to be a bit more deliberate on keeping the colors there. My tendency is to use the same one for everything, and, and it gives it a, a rich mm, yeah. a rich combination of the brown and black together. And I just kind of go with whatever's in my hand at the time. It's like the dirty water and mixing uh, your brush. And uh, yeah, I love working with dirty water. Okay. So we're really getting a sense of movement there, I think. You know, it's like spinning around. And that same principle, I'm now using the uh, the, the dark, ch the dark brown, brown chalk, chalk yeah. and going into all of the roots of the flux. So it gives that sense that it's like coming out of the background. Right. And those guys are, are sort of spinning as well. And then on the other side, I'm using the light, the ochre uh, chalk pencil and just laying down some dollops on the ends of those, the larger ends of those shapes. And then coming back in with the tortillon and I'm just going to move around the, the lighter shapes and then bring it in with the darker shapes and and just like Maria said, pretty soon they're all uh, black. They were all black. black but in this case, brown. you know, <laughs> you get a bit more complex of a color. And I'm also using what is on the tortillon to touch on the some of the orbs now and then. And just like moving the tile under the pen. 
I move the tile while I'm shading or using the tortillon. So whatever is comfortable for your hand. And sometimes it's nice to be able to see where the tortillon is pointing. So just moving those together. And again, taking your time to enjoy this process. And taking the inspiration that this might give you to do something that's different from what's being done. And we, we say that a lot, you know, like this is not for us to get you to make a duplicate. We could do that on the copier. This is to get you to be inspired by this to do something that only you can do. And there's a bit of a difference there. Yep, always, oops, forgot to fill that in. So you can see the, the richness of the colors in contrast with the black and white is kind of an interesting uh, right. pattern, right? And don't worry, you're always going to find a place where you forgot to uh, soften it up or go back later and, and do it. And this is really quite fractal because the whole string, the overall string, is very similar to one of those flux shapes. And then it's internal and you so get it. Now he's going in and doing that magic thing way right at the end, mm -hmm. adding the white highlight where there's no shading. And you don't you don't want to put the white highlight anywhere near graphite because it becomes gray. So mm -hmm. you don't get as, as pure a, a, a highlight as you might like. It sort of brings it out a little bit. So I'm just picking up some of the color and putting it in different places, doing like a little low light there. And don't forget, we add shading and highlights not according to where the light is most of the time, but according to the pattern. Right. So you, you do it the same way on the pattern. And put in your chop. Really, you know, appreciate what you've done, enjoying this opportunity. Uh, please share these online. The hashtag will be at the end and uh, on the app. We love, love, love seeing the directions that you take this and where you go with it. Beautiful. Good job, Ricky. Thank you. <laughs> and then uh, sign it, date it, and... Uh, and scrawl something illegible on the back. <laughs> Not that <laughs> like I... Like that? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and welcome to Project Pack 22, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks again. See you later. Bye now. Bye.